Okay. So I just want to talk a little bit more about uh, <clears throat> cliches. So actors, actors, characters in movies and books aren't the only things that are liable to cliches or liable to be subjected to cliched thinking. Many, many stories that we tell and have told um, have been re have been repeated. The same theme, the same plot. In in a big sense, you know, I have down here in this little thing. It's about love stories. How many stories when two people fall in love, and then there's a problem, and there's a conflict, and then it resolves happily or unhappily. Romeo and Juliet, it's unhappy. Um, right? It's, we see it again and again and again. It's just a story. It's a Hollywood story. We've seen it a million times. And around Christmas, it's all, you know, Christmas on the farm. <laughs> it's, that's the story. Or Christmas, you know, at Hallmark headquarters, whatever it is. And another popular one is the movie Rocky. I don't know if any of you guys saw it. It was Best Picture of the Year in the early 80s. And it's about this down-and-out guy, the last one you'd think would be a contender, uh, given a chance to at a big fight with the champion. And he trains and trains and trains and drinks raw eggs and lifts weights and runs up the steps of Philadelphia. And he meets the champion in a fight. And he wins or he loses. And there have been so many athletic story films like that before and since. And so stories, fictional stories, of course I'm talking about, are often cliched. They're just patterns that seem to be ingrained in us. You know, um, people say that you heard about the monotheistic story about there being a paradise and then there's a fall from paradise and we want to get back to the paradise we have it in the bible with eden and adam and eve we have it in other mythology the mythology of this thing called atlantis that supposedly was this magical per perfect kingdom that somehow has disappeared where did it go how did we get back there we've fallen from grace we're no longer blessed how do we get back to it that's those are several of very common stories but Hollywood stories also, sometimes just within the movie as you're watching it, how many times have you said, oh, I can guess the ending, <laughs> I know what's going to happen next, because they use the same hackneyed cliche, I haven't used the word hackney yet, it's much like a cliche, <clears throat> it's been used again and again and again, so this says list the stories we see again and again and again, I think it's alright if you just think about it. How do we know the hero's girlfriend is about to die? Well, because they've exchanged this wonderful embrace. They love each other. I'm so happy with you. And then you know, oh boy, she's going to get it. <laughs> or he's going to get it. Or whatever. So, it's honestly, I don't think cliches and hackneyed ideas are done with a malevolent intention. I think it's just people either can't help it because the stories are so ingrained. Or the Hollywood top executives won't let them, always want them to have a happy ending and won't let them put the ending they want. Or maybe they're just lazy. <laughs> that's the best they can come up with. And that's why the five or six characters in uh, Goonies are such stereotypes and, and, in a way, caricatures. The fat boy is always eating, you know, dot, dot, dot. Isn't there a fat character in Mulan, too? The fat character always does this, or fat character always does that. What about the fat character in um, Acapella, Rebel Wilson? Is she a caricature? So, laziness or lack of talent again. Desire to manipulate. I think most of those plot things are more the former. Laziness and lack of talent, honestly. But, <clears throat> when you get right down to it, it's all about the source. All about the source. Here are some sources, most of whom we've seen at one time or another in this class. And if you put these sources on that grid, what kind of intent do they have? Is it good? Is it uh, neutral? Is it evil? 
are they passive or neutral or are they active and wanting to stir things up? Well, this guy's Joseph Goebbels, the head of propaganda for the Nazi Reich in World War II. This is an evil, bad guy who wants to stir things up. They don't get much worse than this guy. This is the other complete side of the coin. This is Alice Walker, who wrote The Color Purple. She's the source. She's the author. She's good, 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 and active. Anthony Fauci. Right? We all know about him. We see him on TV. Do you believe him? Do you believe the things he says? If not, why not? Who's telling you not to? What are their sources? What about this guy? FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Some people regard him as the greatest president, maybe next to Abraham Lincoln, we've ever had. Look at his record. Look what he did for the country. And by the way, not everything he ever said to anyone, to everyone, was a complete truth. He was a very manipulative politician. Um, but I think to the public, he pretty much always spoke the truth. Maybe behind the scenes, not so much. But uh, he seemed to end up with some pretty good results, like winning World War II and ending the Depression and establishing social programs like Social Security and unemployment that help us to this day. Harry Melber, we looked at his love of music. But he's a commentator on a cable channel, MSNBC. Um, is he always objective about the news? Does he have a point of view that comes across? Frederick Douglass. Escaped slave turned great orator, turned great author, turned man who had a huge influence on race relations in the United States before, during, and after the Civil War. This gentleman is a uh, very well-regarded commentator on Univision. Um, what do you think about him as a source? Do you tend to believe the things he says? Why or why not? And here's where you don't know the source. You can't find out where it came from. It doesn't seem to be a real thing, a real spaceship group, a real person. What's going on with that? What does that tell us about what to believe and what not to believe? Here are a few more. Gwen Eiffel passed away very sadly, very suddenly from cancer. She was the head of the nightly news on public television. What about public television as a source in general? Some people think it's full of lies, some don't. What's the truth? What are the sources for the facts that they use? There's Orson Welles, broadcasting War of the Worlds, smoking a cigar in his early 20s. The content of War of the Worlds was not true. <coughs> it was fiction. It caused some harm out there. He made the film Citizen Kane about a media baron who tyrannized and had an effect on society and on the people around him. So Orson Welles is a source, this time of fiction. Is he a good source? Do he have bad things in mind? Is he trying to screw up the country? They say he made War of the Worlds as a commentary on Father Coughlin. Or is Father Coughlin? I want to bring him up. I'm bringing up everybody else. There he is. <laughs> An anti-Semitic priest from the Midwest was thrown off the air in, I think, 1939, because he was harming our war effort against Germany and Japan. The other ones I put up, I'm going to go back and go back to them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Well, <clears throat> vaccines. That's Jenny McCarthy. She's very virulently anti-vaccine. Do you believe her as a source in what she says? What are her facts? How does she back them up? This guy's anti-vaccine. This is that doctor we saw who was selling his own remedies for COVID. You gonna believe him? 
Charles Dickens wrote fiction. You going to believe his characters were done for good intent or bad attempt, uh, intent? Was he was Scrooge a caricature of a miser? And is that a harmful thing that Dickens is doing? Cochlin we saw, and here again is this blurred face fellow. It looks like a one of the character who watched what well, characters who watched the videotape in the movie The Ring. If you ever saw that, it's a good scary one with Naomi Watts. Don't see Ring Part Two. Seeing Ring Part One, see that Ring Part One. Okay, once again the unknown. So what have we covered today? Which came first, changes in society or new ideas in mass media? I think we came away saying it depends. <laughs> But basically, they both are interrelated and so closely wound up, it's probably near impossible to tell where something has started. Chicken or the egg. You need them both. We looked at freedom of the press. We looked at the First Amendment to the Constitution. We read it. <coughs> we also looked at freedom of speech. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to add freedom of the press slash speech. Whoops, speech, speech versus disinformation because that we talked about both. And I'm going to save it because that's just the kind of professor I am. All right. We looked at misinformation and disinformation. We looked at some downright harm, some lies from other governments. And from entities within our country, people trying to influence other people with things that are not true, are not backed with facts. Uh, and we looked at governments trying to have a bad effect on us, still trying to split us apart, the Russians. Every time I see something that's pro-gun or anti-gun or anti-Black Lives Matter or pro-Black Lives Matter, I wonder, is this the Russians just trying to throw fuel on the fire of our discord and disagreement? Because let's face it, the level of discord and disagreement in our country is higher than it has ever been, ever been. Why? It's a big, big problem, folks. The biggest problem. Disinformation and evil content getting to people, keeping them from taking vaccines, making them go to our capital on January 6th to crash into Congress and kill policemen. And on and on and on. We talked about media liter literacy in general. We revised our template, which we call SMAMBER, or I call SMAMBER. You probably call it something else. To talk about the need to be a detective and to push harder in finding out who are the real sources. Don't just, oh, so-and-so wrote this. Do a little research. And we talked about stereotypes, uh, caricatures, cliches, and when is it harmless and just from laziness or lack of talent, and when is there something more manipulative going on. And we talked about Heio Miyazaki, the wonderful Japanese filmmaker, as an example of all the best in terms of storytelling. And we're wrapping up. Here's what's due by the next class. You're going to read Chapter 14, the online class. Decide on your term paper topic by the 3rd. Write me a report on that. Just read the, what's required. And the final lecture is on these two things, as promised in the syllabus. That's it. That's what we covered. And goodbye. Good luck. See you soon.